Hi and welcome. Can you please present yourself? My name is Shidi Kao. I'm a writer based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. I'm here right now in the Alliance Frontiers KL. Um, I have uh, two books out. One is a collection of short stories called Ripples and Other Stories. And my second book is a novel called The Sum of Our Bodies, which was translated into French by Frederick Drillier and published by Zumba. And um, what does the idea of a place for a book mean to you in today's Malaysia? Well, um, well, my book, the place in my book is a fictional one. And um, in the fictional place, I have uh, put in the things which were important to me, especially when I was growing up. Uh, I spent many years in uh, boarding school in small towns and I think that was what went into the book and there are many places still in Malaysia uh, which are very much still like that I mean it, we've not gotten in the malls and all that have not gotten into those places yet and I wanted to write about a place like that um, just before it uh, became bigger and um, much of it is based uh, on, on two places. One is in the northern state of Kedah. We have 13 states in Malaysia. One, uh, one is uh, my parents' hometown called Kulin in Kedah. And the other is where I spent a couple of years down south in Johor called Kluang. And if you travel along uh, uh, throughout peninsula Malaysia, you will see uh, many places like this. Um. Could you describe a reading place or a writing place oh. that you are that particularly you are attached to um, or inspires you and why? Mm. I okay. Obviously, I spend a lot of time writing in in coffee shops. Uh, there's a lot of life going on in coffee shops in Malaysia, especially the uh, not the cafes but the the locally run ones. Um, but uh, personally, I spend a lot of time in my bedroom. Uh, I write my, my two books were pretty much written on the bed and I've thought about it I think your, your question came to me and I, I, I was thinking about why I was so attached to my bed and my bedroom and I think it's actually because of my boarding school years where where for seven years I was living in a dormitory and the only personal space was actually either around the bunk bed and that was how you you had your personal space to work, to study. So I think I've learned to, to, to work in that kind of uh, environment. Um, but years of writing on the bed is not very good for the back. And uh, I think this year I'm going to set up a study this year. And in terms of a place in Malaysia that would inspire you? Uh, there, are, there are many places. I think we have... Um, Part of the book is also based in, a, in on an island. I think in it is fictional, but a lot of it is based on Langkawi. Um, and there are many, again, there are many such uh, islands throughout Malaysia. I, I have a fondness for, for um, small towns. I have also a fondness for parts of the city which, which still retain some, um, uh, some old character, if you want to call it that, while there are you know, shiny buildings coming up all over, the, all over the place. And there are still pockets of places like that, even within KL, which uh, still very um, uh, not yet homogenous in terms of uh, modernity and in terms of commerce and businesses coming in. And I think that is uh, where we still have some, where the heart of Malaysia still is uh, in many ways. Um. You did mention some fictional places that you described in your work. Mm -hmm. um, other um, places that um, you like to write about that are fictional and why? Mm. Uh, I think I make the places fictional because, uh, because of a sense of control in the writing. I think, I think when you write, I think you are a little bit of a control freak in terms of what you want to go into the place. So when I created Lubut Sayong, the place in my book, I wanted the, the hills, the mountains, the lake, the town, and, the, um, and all that, the schools and the places, all that within a contained um, space. And well, I guess I could have done it with a real place, but then it might have not had every single element that I wanted uh, in it. So. I wanted that in that particular place. I wanted the river to go through it. I wanted the river to flood at a certain time. And that's, that's why, I guess, um, um, 
That's why I do fiction. Um, what effect did last year have on you and on your inspiration for your work? Mm. Uh, I think it was a big year last year for, for everyone in the world. Um, a lot of people lost many things. I mean, people have lost their loved ones, their jobs, their livelihoods. Um, I think for me personally, it was a time to, to think about what, was in, what is important to me. And uh, I was still, I was working at that time. I was in my day job in a mall and I was working pretty much uh, every day except for the periods when we had a strict MCO. And it really got me thinking whether it was something that I wanted to continue doing for the rest of um, whatever time I have. And I decided to quit my day job, so I did that. Um, when it comes to the writing though, I feel I'm, I'm not writing yet about uh, stories which are directly related to, to the pandemic because I, I feel that I don't have the distance yet and I also feel that because there are so many stories out there of very true pain and very real losses that to make up fiction about it, it just seems a little bit like in bad, bad taste. Um, right now. So I, I'm letting it sit for a while. I'm sure it will come into the writing of a lot of people. I think not just myself. I think all writers are influenced by um, big events, by revolutions, by wars, by pandemics, by the losses of all sorts. And I think at the end of the day, it comes, it boils down to a personal story, which uh, is what it is between um, one person and the next, or a family. So I think those stories will come um, within the background of the pandemic, but to me, maybe it will come a little bit later when it settles down. Anything else you're working on right now? Um, I'm working on a couple of things. I personally love short stories a lot, so I've actually um, kind of revived my writing around that. I'm also look, look, working on a longer work, but it's going to take a bit of time before it comes out.